What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to a leap year special of For The Fans. Today's show actually has nothing different. We recorded it on the 29th. We will be of course reflecting upon a weekend's football in action. Liverpool lost in the Capital One Cup final to Manchester City. Arsenal lost out at Old Trafford. Leicester grabbed a late winner. There's that and more to talk about in today's show. So let's get straight into it. Hello there, listeners. Welcome back. It's for the fan show on a weekend where Liverpool proved to only be the second best team in the country. Uh, there was some also Premier League football, and as ever, I'm here to talk about it with my friend Jack and my friend Callum. Uh, Callum, we'll start with you. How are things? Uh, a little bit better than Jack. Well, let's let's quickly move over to Jack. Jack, how how are you feeling right now on a scale of one just, to ten? Just a bit annoyed about the football. Bit of a stressful start to the week. I've been better. But I'm here. Okay, well, let's, I've made it. Let's hope. Let's hope we get ranty, Jack. You didn't the hear show him now. before we started, listeners. He was. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what I did, and it was. You, you were better off not hearing it, listeners. Let me tell you. Uh, so the, the situation we've got ourselves, gentlemen, is it's time for the feature of the week. Uh, Jack, can you provide the jingle, please? Ben's jingle of the week. One of those shows, <laughs> listeners. One of those shows. So, high uh, energy. Now, high energy. I can it was. The, I can have to win the feature, was, and I'll be fine. Good. Now it was a very exciting. And um, enthralling Capital One Cup match. Well, was it was it Capital One or is it just League Cup? Who sponsors it these days? I just call I it don't the know. League Cup. Capital One. I think it's Capital One, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, now, so I'm going to go through the. We're going to go through the annals of time, uh, guys. And I know you appreciate this because it's it's always stressful. Um, we're going to start in 2006. Obviously, keep your hands away from your keyboards as this quiz is very, very much a, a very important situation for us both. And obviously, Jack's got a lot of riding on this, so cheating might be uh, on his agenda. Uh, we're going to. I want you to tell me who won the game, and for an extra point, who scored in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hate the so, League Cup unless Liverpool are in the so, final. Okay, so, we're going to start with 2006. And I'm going to start with Jack. All right, Jack? Yeah? Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, the game, Jack, was Manchester United and Wigan Athletic. Which team won the game? Manchester United, one would assume. One point. Uh, for an extra point, can you name someone who scored in that game? Doesn't right. even have to be necessarily for Manchester United. Uh, Pascal Chimbonda. <laughs> Incorrect. The result oh, was 4 0. I wanted to go and, uh, right out of their <laughs> Wigan player from 2006. The fact I've named a Wigan player from that era, I think, deserves a point in itself. He did play right back on the day. So, exactly. uh, there so, you go. so well done. To, so well done to you. Uh, we're now going to move <laughs> to 2007, Callum. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. The game was Chelsea versus Arsenal. Uh, can you tell me who won the game? Um. Chelsea on the the, Weng, the Wenger Mourinho basis. Correct. Yeah. Point. Uh, can you tell me a goal scorer from the game? Oh no. Um, there were there were three red cards in this game. Three. Did Pascal Chimbonda yeah. get sent off? Uh, not didn't feature. Didn't feature. Uh, okay. I'm. I'll go. It's a toss up between Lampard and Drogba in terms of probability. I'll just go with Drogba. The correct answer is DJ Drogba. It's 2 1. Theo Walcott yeah. getting the goal for Arsenal, somewhat surprisingly. Uh, yeah, three players were sent off in the 96th minute Carlo Torre, Adebayor, and uh, John Obi Mikel. A game I think we all remember. Andrei Shevchenko played in that game as well, which I think's always a shock. Uh, right, well done, about, well done, Colin. The good thing about the order you've chosen here is I get 2009. Ah, interesting. <laughs> we know where this is going then. Uh, Jack, back to you. The, the year is 2008. Uh, Chelsea uh, played Tottenham but who won the game? I have a weird feeling this is Tottenham Okay, is that your answer? Yeah, I'll go with Tottenham I have a really yeah, I think they won that game Well, unfortunately for you, Jack they did win the game oh, Ooh, teased, him. <laughs> teased him Teased uh, yeah, him sco- Can you name a goal scorer from the game? Um, for an extra point I'm shaking my head here I'll go with Robbie Keane <laughs> 
Uh, Robbie Keane did play in that game and was substituting extra time, but it's incorrect. Right. Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea scored was two one. Drogba got one. It was Berbatov penalty, oh, and unbelievably, Drogba, this is this is unbelievable. In the ninety fourth minute, and the goal that won the game was Jonathan Woodgate. Good grief! Imagine you would that. not have guessed that. Have you would not Drogba. have guessed that. No. Uh, we're now going to go to two thousand and ten. No. Uh, Callum. The oh, this is a shame. Uh, the game. No, we're gonna we'll go to two thousand nine. We'll be fair. Uh, Callum, the t the, the the match was Manchester United versus Tottenham in two thousand nine. Who yeah. won the game? Um. Oh, this was the one with Ben Foster looking at the iPad. Uh, oh. I mean, a ah. memorable final. You know, but no, no. Well, to be fair, Kino's Kino's done very well there, and. So it must be Man United because he was watching the pens and he saved the pen. Well, you are correct. It was Manchester United. Now, obviously, you've done a little, you've done well there. It was nil nil. So if you can name someone that scored their penalty, I will give you the points. Oh, um, but you did very well to who would to be dissect the iPad. Well who done. would be taking? Uh, just oh, just Wayne Rooney. Uh, incorrect. Oh, uh, Giggs, Tevez, Ronaldo, and Anderson. Rooney didn't feature in the game. I do wonder. Two thousand and nine. I thought there could be an injury, but no. Uh, right. Two thousand and ten. Jack. It was Aston Villa versus Manchester United. Oh, I remember yeah, this game very well, actually. Win. Remember this game very well. Uh, you are correct. Can you name a goal scorer from the game? Uh, Rooney. Can I- Correct. It was the game, as I recall, it was where the Vidic game didn't where get sent Nemanja off. Vidic should have been sent off after about nine minutes. I think. Yeah. You sound well, Callum. Well, he should have. He should have gone. I remember it well. Uh, yeah. Michael Owen scored. Uh, Rooney, you get the points for that, by the way, because he did score. The fact that Owen um, scored, it feels wrong to say Rooney Mike, scored for United. Mike Riley, yeah. Man United bias. Could have been Mike Riley. I think it uh, might have been. Yeah. Whoever uh, it is, it, it was Man United it was, bias. It was, uh, it was Phil Dowd, actually. But yeah, no, Phil Dowd, still, same thing. You named a referee. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, he should have been sent off and it wasn't given. Milner did score the resulting penalty. Didn't even get a card and then was later booked in the game. I seem to remember Martin O'Neill getting very annoyed. Actually, I have, uh, if you want to tweet this out later, I have a very funny photo of me uh, outside <laughs> Wembley. You can tweet on the. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, we will do. <laughs> Leak up, we'll, hashtag Leak Up Memories. Um, Jack, we're going to come to you now. Is it Jack's turn? Again? No, it's not your turn. No, it's it's, it's, it's Callum's turn. The game, game, Callum, was Arsenal versus Birmingham City. And that's the one that the Blues won, wasn't it? You're right. Point. Uh, Can you tell me a goal scorer in the game? Oh, that's... mm. That's the big question. Mm. Some great names on either side. It's palpable here. Was Craig Garner playing for them then? Uh, I think mm, he might be. have been. Uh, I'll say C- Craig Gardner. Incorrect. Uh, he did play in the game. Uh, Arsenal's goal scorer was Robert Van Persie. Birmingham's were yeah. uh, Nikola Zigic and uh, Obafemi Martins. Can you believe? Oh, I, I, I actually know that, forgot actually. Martins played for Birmingham. I'm sure I should have forget. One, to of my, <laughs> one of my housemates it, is a Blues fan, and it was Obafemi Martins' day yesterday because that was the day that was he, it. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was a game in which Kevin Phillips, Cameron Jerome, Mar- Maram Shamak, uh, and Nicholas Bettner were all on the bench in that game. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's mark some of a sort of quality football match, right there. You should you should win. So- they should win some sort of prize for that alone. Uh, Jack, we're going to come back to you. Uh, so so far, boys, the scores are level. By the way, four Ooh. points each. Um, the 2012 FA, uh, League Cup final, Jack, which was between Cardiff and Liverpool. Liverpool. I was there. Yeah, I enough. remember watching this I, I was the student there. bar at uni. Um, you are correct then, Jack. It was Liverpool. Can, can, I say missed a from the day? For be- can I say you missed a penalty for the point? Well, no. Well, I, don't, I don't want penalties because there was goals in the game. Uh, so, can't who scored in the game? Who scored, so I was just going to say that Anthony Gerrard <laughs> missed the penalty. but um, He did, the final pen. He did. So I, get a, so I don't get a point for telling you who missed, but I now can't recall who scored. No. Um, need, I need a goal scorer from the game. Oh, God. Who would it have been? <laughs> I remember the goals very well, I must say. Oh, you were I was there. there. I was there in a student bar, that. very drunk. Yeah. I'll go with Gerard. I was, I, incorrect. Uh, it was Martin Skirtle, Dirk Hout, uh Ryan, I think it's Ryan, uh, Joe Mason, sorry, and, uh, and Ben Turner scored in the 118th minute at my end. It was horrendous. Uh, so you get one point there. 
Congratulations to you. I feel like I've let back, myself down there. Back to <laughs> you have let yourself down. Back to uh, back to Callum. How long we? How long has this feature gone on for? Too I don't long, know. Oh, we're fine. We'll keep going. Time wise, we're fine. No, we're fine. Uh, Callum, the game was Bradford City and Swansea City. Oh, it was over to, over, I, over to you. Know, I forgot about that final. I Who won that, that game? Oh well, it was Swansea. Three 0 right? Yes. Um, Point. But I I, told, I forgot. That's an amazing well, cup final need, lineup, isn't it? We really? need a name. We it. do need a name. Um, what was the year again? Sorry, twenty twelve. It was two thousand and thirteen. Thirteen. Mm. Um, I was guilty there. Maybe. Bradford beat Arsenal and Villa on the way to the final. Either they did. Um, <laughs> they beat Villa over two legs. <laughs> Probably still beat twice. I think they beat him twice. <laughs> I mean, they beat him twice. <laughs> it was, it oh, was beat, maybe not twice, actually. actually. Yeah, wait. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was. Oh no, it was three one and two one. So it was, uh, uh, yes, it was it comfortable for him. If anything, Caleb, Cops. comfortable. <laughs> right, come on, name a Swansea um, goal scorer for me, mm, or, or a Bradford goal scorer. Nathan Dyer. Correct. Got two on the day, and he was upset about the penalty. Do you remember? Yes. It? Oh, he was. He went, yeah, I remember that. Because uh, De Guzman took it in the ninety-first minute. They were four and off, and De Guzman was like, "No, no, no, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on penalty." Duty. Actually, no, no, it's fifty-ninth minute, but they were still three and up. I mean, that's uh, still a career highlight for Nathan Dyer. Yeah, to get absolutely. two in a league um, about to pick up a Premier League winners' medal. I, d- I dare say it's. I dare say it's all been downhill from there, gentlemen. Uh, right, we've got well, two more to go. To, then he's about to win the Premier League. So two more, two more to go. Um, 2014, Jack. It was Manchester City and Sunderland. Who won the game? Um, City did. Correct. And the, well, name a scorer from. I thought like a defender scored from a corner, like really late on. So I'm going to say Vincent Company. Oh, incorrect. Uh, Barini scored for Sunderland. It was three-one. Uh, Torre, uh, yeah, Torre. Semi Nazari scored, and as did uh, Jesus Navas. So it's have you talking of Sam and Nasri, have you seen his hair? Yes, he's done some but he's done a bizarre thing with that, hasn't he? That is I don't amazing. I'm not, I'd right, once a Google Nasri. It's blue. Wait, you've not seen it. He, he not... looks like he's had it dyed, but like it's gone wrong. And yeah. you, you sort of go, Oh yeah, I've dyed my hair, it's gone wrong. What a what a conundrum. Uh Kino, just my like up. He looks like he's tried to become De Bruyne. Okay, yeah. In a way, but what the ginger lad? He's not that ginger. Right. Ch- what De Bruyne? <laughs> He wasn't okay. A, let's move okay, on. Okay, let's just move on. Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea, Tottenham, Kino. Who scored? Or what was the score? Firstly, who won? Chelsea, Tottenham. Chelsea last year. won. Correct. And can you name a scorer from the game? Oh, I don't know. Um, William. Good. William. William. No, incorrect. Uh, can I it was steal? Terry and no. Terry. And, or if you name the final player, Ivanovic. No, it's Costa. It's a- uh, and that brings us to the end of this week's feature. And we'll Kino move on to the, the chatter. Week. Uh, Jack, you got a total of six <laughs> points, but this week's winner with seven. Hey, sorry, Jack. Is uh, is kind of Jack's week wait, gets wait. worse and worse. I didn't get to answer this. And it's only though, just begun. The points, right? So no, City you, won it. Because you, you had the well, you had the first you had the first year. <laughs> no, so no, I'm no, sorry, no. Mate. We go all the way right. to the present day. <laughs> so City won it. That's a point. Get that down. Okay, well, Jack, you're now just introducing the next feature, mate. Yes, so this I works appreciate it. This is next year. This work- this okay, works beautifully. So Jack, tell the, us about this game. <laughs> it was the League Cup final, Jack. It was Manchester City 1. It was Liverpool 1. And after penalties, Manchester City won it. Uh, how, how did you see the game then? Obviously, Liverpool fan through and through. How, how did you see it? Liverpool were awful. If you can't hit the target in the first 70 minutes of a, of a Cup final, you just don't deserve to win it. You just I, don't don't think they were, I thought they were awful in the first half. I thought half. defensively I didn't think the they, they actually looked competent, which is a compliment for Liverpool of recent times. Yeah. Lucas, I thought, really impressed you, me, uh... actually. And actually, when Colo Torre and Lucas were playing at centre-back with each other, that was the most calm I've ever been with Liverpool defending in a long time. I don't know, I mean, you know, between the, between the sticks was a, yeah, he, uh, he was a worry for me. You know, he made the mistake for the first goal, but I felt like he did... It's a, it's a really himself. bad mistake, just to... Cl- you talk about the mistake. Like, so, City so, so scored the first goal from a from a narrow-ish angle, an angle that Manuel should never ever be beaten by, um, and it goes in hashtag five more years, listeners. It's a weird one though because I don't feel like you life. expect it to get smashed at him, I, I, and he should save it. There's no denying that. But like, part of me thinks he should do better than he does. Yeah, I, I can't really blame him for being caught out by it, but at the same time, you're getting paid 
tens of thousands of yeah. pounds to stop a ball going in the goal and it's been kicked at your legs that is his job uh, Casino got a late one um, I guess th- I, don't, I don't want to say it was a talking point um, well Keenan did you firstly uh, just to clarify did you watch the game Callum? I did it was a funny game because it um, for for probably the mm, first 70 60 70 minutes it was a very very poor game like you say Liverpool didn't hardly had a shot on goal uh, and then mm. suddenly it it came alive for for pretty much yeah. the rest of the all the way up to the penalties I, it was really exciting from that point that's the way cup finals often yeah. go it, it was funny that you say 60-70 because actually City scored in the 50th 49th 50th and even 10 minutes after that Liverpool were there trying to rush much, it and yeah. hurry it yes. and it was like well you've got you've got to slow it down and calm down a bit because right now there was a way back I, I always felt like there was a way back in for Liverpool but it was a bit unclear about how it would happen Sturridge had a poor game didn't really didn't impact it at all I thought City looked it looked relatively good with Otamendi and company. It's I, a shame that's not sort of been a, a constant fixture for them all season. I think on, you know. I think you're right. Um, although although they did play well, company and Otamendi, I thought as as has been a feature of City uh, throughout the most of this year, um, they they had a lot of defending to do. Uh, and like you say, Liverpool always looked like they were going to create chances in that second half, uh, and they had mm. a lot of defending to do because of the way that their midfield currently works. I know Torre scored the winning penalty. Actually, his uh, his celebration when he scored the penalty was one probably my favourite moment of the game because uh, I don't know if <laughs> it was you pretty saw arrogant it. celebration. Well, I he thought. tried he tried to run off towards Pellegrini, and every other member of the playing staff, the team, all just ran towards Caballero. So he yeah. was he was sort of running off along the touchline, waving behind him for everyone to follow. Uh, and no one was paying attention, which I thought was it, it was fitting for the man. Uh, yeah, I thought J- Jack touched on it a moment ago. I thought Lucas, from a from a Liverpool standpoint at least, Lucas had a fantastic game. I thought actually he did. Although actually, Saka went yes, off, I agree with that. Saka went off, and it was a it was a disappointing moment because you thought, wow, our like first choice centre back essentially has had to go off. Sorry, come on, who he did a good job really. He didn't do anything. It didn't essentially put a foot wrong. Um, but Lucas got a lot of stick on Twitter before the game. A lot of people were saying, "Oh, you know what, Aguero will get it, get it in." But I thought if Liverpool win that game, Lucas is man of the match um, and comfortably man of the match. I felt I thought he had a really, really good game. I, I don't feel like Liverpool's creative players did enough, Jack. I, I don't know about you. It just seemed a little bit. It's a bit flat. Again, he it missed the a penalty as well. Yeah, it was one of those well, games he's, where he's got the to goal, score but, yeah. something from nothing. The cup, the cup finals are where you're looking for one or two players really just to create something from nothing. You know, you want a moment of magic, especially in a game like this where Liverpool were. Let's face it, they were outclassed by City for large portions of this game, particularly. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure. I agree with that. I'm not sure. I don't think it was. I don't think City were like clear winners within the game. Uh, okay, I think they were I in th- control of the game. They might not have been looking. Uh, uh, they look like they were going to score, and Liverpool looked like they couldn't score. Jack, you say that, but the possession-wise, 61 percent for Liverpool. Do you th- do you think that was because in extra time and in the second half they came into the game more? I, I'd be interested to know what it was at half time actually, possession-wise. But do, do you I not think I, that... I feel like Liverpool probably did have Go quite on. a lot of the ball, but I just wonder. There was times where Liverpool kind of they dwelled on it quite a lot. They played quite slow. You know, with quick players on a head like Liverpool had, I wanted them to be a bit more direct at times, you know, try and get behind City, because they have mm. got frailties at the back which have been exposed this year. And yeah, I, I yeah. don't know, it felt like for me, Liverpool had possession, but there wasn't a killer instinct about what they were doing with the ball. There was, you know, times where we had this build up play down That's the fair. left and right, the crosses would get pinged from one side of the pitch and just go to the opposite fullback. <laughs> Who's on the overlap? I yeah. agree. Actually, I think I think there was a for the first. I would agree with that for the first hour. Like like we said after after like obviously City scored their goal. Then there was ten minutes where it was quite flat, and you wondered whether it would just finish one nil. But then actually Milner started to get a lot of space on the left hand side, um, and he got a lot more joy in delivering balls into the box. And once the wingers started whipping balls in, uh, the goal came from that, uh, and it was um, it looks a lot more effective. Um, and I think while City centre backs were very good, I think there's question marks over Sanya's form, uh, particularly since the turn of the year. And you could see that Liverpool, after they realised that that was where to target City, they got a lot of more joy from that. Yeah. Well, uh, and then after that, at uh, full time, that's the change Pellegrini made. He, t- he brought Sablesser on, took Sanya off. Um, exactly. I guess the question to come out of this, I think from a Liverpool perspective, and it's not been overly spoken about, um, is, is, is Benteke's Liverpool career over? 
Well, we I mean, we talked about this, didn't we, in January? And I think well, I made a point that like, I felt like Klopp had made up his mind. I think that this match reaffirms that the fact that he's t- he brings a Rigi on. The fact that, yeah, the fact he's bringing on a Rigi who's what twenty two years old, not that much first team experience, particularly in England, and he's leaving out mm. Benteke like. I, I, I think Benteke's done. I think Klopp's made up his mind. He has given him a fair few chances. And he's not really seized opportunities. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It's going to take a massive turnaround for Benteke. But I just wonder what is next for him, really. I was about to say that. Where does he go from here? He, I th- go, he could come back to the villa. That'll be fine. I, I think. Um, a, do you know what? I think a team like Chelsea or United would would just go. No, obviously, I don't think he'll go from Liverpool to United, or, or he stays another year. I don't know what Benteke's contracts like. I can't imagine he's on a massive amount. You've, you've spent thirty two million no. to bin him off after a season when you know about Sturridge's injury problems. You haven't got any wingers. Essentially, I, f- I feel like. I feel like Benteke needs another year for all parties, for him, for the club, even arguably for Klopp. Now, if he's decided this season that he's not good enough, then he has to leave at the end of the season. There'll be no point in keeping him. But, again, you, with Sturridge's injury problems, I feel like it'd be daft to just ship him out. I feel like Benteke's coming to Liverpool, said said he's a bit of an all-round player, can fit into the system, and actually, Liverpool didn't buy properly to accommodate Benteke, and that's that's been... Part of the problem. I, I it's arguably not Benteke's fault that that's occurred. I do wonder if players like Markovic coming back, if you know, he might fit in a little bit more. You know, if we bring in a few more wide men. But I think the other thing that's actually a big influencing factor is can Liverpool get a landmark striker in? And I feel like Benteke well, was but, meant but to be. But do you need that. one though? Do they need one? I think if you're going to get rid of Benteke, you've got to have one before you let him go. Like wh- whether yeah, or not, not that player not. exists is the big yeah. question mark because every summer you hear teams like Arsenal talking about they need that landmark striker and you know what Liverpool might go well, into this summer they might not be yeah. able to find that kind of player and Benteke might stay but definitely in the next two summers I think Benteke will be gone by this time next year probably or at least next summer and there will be yeah. a big striker you're, you're assume money's been poured into in his place are you t- <laughs> Are you telling me Danny Ings isn't that man, Jack? <laughs> I can't just um, say, I but, love Danny Ings. Did you see? I'm going a bit off topic here. He uploaded on Vimeo <laughs> just saying, uh, like a training Danny. montage of him coming back to full fitness. <laughs> like Aya the Tiger, I you know, that. playing Rocky. And it was just like flashbacks of him playing Rocky for Ings. Burnley in Liverpool. And then him like, I like it was amazing. <laughs> I'm going to find it and put it on our Twitter. Well, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased he's... Uh, I-, I hope he does come back. I think it's a, it's a big shame. I actually think we've missed him a lot this year. I would say a lot. I'd say we've missed him. I think I, I just finally on Benteke. I think he can't play with Coutinho and Firmino, and that's. Can I just be applauded for being able to say Coutinho and Firmino and not Coutinho and Firmino? I love that, Firmino. The amount of pundits that do that <laughs> drives me mad. Um, he can't play with those two players because they fill the gaps that he wants to just sort of roam in. And you, you've seen it. You know, he doesn't like someone near him. He, he likes to be. He likes to do whatever he wants essentially. And yeah. work off players out wide, and he's not had that opportunity I, at Liverpool. I think to answer the question where he might go, I think actually moving to a team like Chelsea or Spurs or even United, but all three of those teams play a style of football different to Liverpool's that I think would probably suit him better. Yeah, that's what um, I mean. And, it, it's bizarre and Spurs I, didn't go in for him, and if they did, why didn't they make the signing? Maybe they thought it was too much money. But I, I think yeah. if I was trying to sort of maybe consider that, I would possibly say that. I think after the three years that Benteke had, Liverpool probably said to him last summer, you'll play, be the first choice man because Sturridge is always going to be out. Yeah, um, probably. And, I'm sure uh, it's part of the reason he moved. And I'm sure one of the reasons that he wouldn't go to Spurs is because I'm not sure he'd sit on the bench while Kane is, is the main man, which he will no, be. Very true, um, very true. Uh, you can maybe you can make it make a case for him maybe playing at United. Um, yeah, uh, Caballero was the hero. Well, this is this is the final point we'll make on this game. Caballero was the hero. Uh, obviously, Pellegrini chose to go with him ahead of Joe Hart. I, I said to you before we started recording, really, that decision looks good if they win, and it looks dreadful if they lose. Um, so Pelle- Pellegrini will obviously feel vindicated in his sort of confidence within Caballero, and it was a bit of a risk. You know, they lost five 0 to Chelsea. He was in goal for that game. Um, but as I say, he was the hero at the end of it. It's a pretty, I'm just going to say, shit penalties from Liverpool. Uh, for City's penalty were very, very good. Like they weren't saveable. Yeah, Mignolet they were. went the right way on a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, Mignolet, apart from that one mistake, Mignolet played all right, and he got close to quite a few of the penalties. I like Tom Chan's penalty, by the way. Any love player that, that dares to chip it down the middle, love it. I mean, uh, if it gone wrong, oh, like, hold on. Yeah, yeah, like he is made out to be a monster, but he didn't. Yeah, he is. Um, 
And just quickly, quickly on Sterling, didn't do anything. So that's that was missed, nice missed to see. Missed a really good chance uh, at one 0 Cong- congratulations to City though. I thought they, I thought they deserved it over on the on the scheme of things. I thought they were they were the better side overall, and uh, and as I say the clinical in a shootout, and that's kind of that's what wins games, doesn't it? In the end of it, uh, let's go to the Premier League then. It was a big clash, a, a very nineties sort of early two thousands clash, wasn't it? Manchester United versus Arsenal. Previously, and, the big two of the, the league. And would you, is it a surprising win for Manchester United? I think Arsenal fans think it is based on the lineups before the game. Uh, I was watching Arsenal fan TV. A little bit this morning, doing a bit of research. Love Claude. They're not very, not very happy. Claude's I would favorite. say <laughs> they are not. They are Nick's like happy. a reality um, TV show. Arsenal fan TV. Have you ever seen Arsenal fan TV? You know, I've you not. You need actually, to watch no. it. It's very funny. Claude oh, is my a... favourite. Claude is like my spirit animal. Well, well Claude, Claude, for those who haven't seen Arsenal fan TV, it's a, uh, it's a guy called Robbie who obviously is sort of a bit of a ground hopper, goes to all the games, stands outside the Emirates, and obviously fans come up and, and say their piece. Um, and the sort of some Arsenal fans that are very sort of ultra realistic in a way that like this has happened, it's all Vegas fault, we've lost, we've lost. That's Claude. And then you've got there's a chap called Ty, I believe, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who is very positive about it's everything. My favourite quote actually There's from Ty desire. this weekend was if we win all our remaining games we'll win the league. <laughs> well, I, I hate to tell you Ty but if Leicester win all theirs you won't. So <laughs> that's, that's how that works. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's fascinating. They're not happy. They thought that, that United side was there to be beaten and if they're serious title contenders then they should be beating them. And a lot of those fans are right. They should you can't be beating them. With that, can all you? of that is all of that no. is true. Um and, and it's once again it's that time of year, isn't it? It's a, it's Champions League quarter final time. I think we're going to do like a bit of a Champions League chat maybe either later this week or early next week. Um to sort of go over all the ins and outs of that because I think I think it's a quite an interesting tournament now. It's hotted up a little bit. Um obviously Arsenal lost to Barcelona. They've now lost to United. Is is this the end of the title challenge? Kino, we'll come like, to you. Like you say um and I I had this down uh in my notes um, it's this Arsenal on 51 points it's the exact same points tally that they have been on for the last four seasons at this time of the year is it really? give, or ta- give or take a week or two yeah it, it sort of, um, and while they are performing to the sort of level that we've come to expect from them they, they are in stasis they have not gone forward everyone else or at least teams like Leicester and Spurs to the distress of many Arsenal fans I'm sure have mm. moved upwards and while some of the teams below them that you'd expect to be around like City and United are sort of uh, wobbling a little bit Arsenal should really um, have had the league in their hands if, right if you were to tell um, Arsenal fans at this point in the year they'd be ahead of City, United and Chelsea they'd probably think they've won the league at the start of the year Exactly. Yeah, yeah and that's f- very true. And the fact that they. Hang on, hang on. Liverpool, Liverpool mate. Liverpool, well, Liverpool, Liverpool are still in there. Liverpool could be. I kind of decided Liverpool. to leave out Liverpool because then someone would be like, what about Tottenham? <laughs> yeah. And the fact, well, the, the fact that they have only managed to just maintain that level, you'd expect that to be enough, like you say, but it's not. And they've not been able to raise the game at the points when they've needed to. Um, a few things that sort of caught my eye from this game. Um, he, we started, interestingly, with Walker up front instead of Giroud. Uh, obviously, he pro- Wenger probably knew that Carrick and Daly Blint would be at centre half for United. Um, and Walcott sort of was assumed, awful, by the way. Just, just was, to touch yeah. on that, Walcott was anonymous. Absolutely. He was, like, he was, I didn't, after half an hour, I didn't know he was on the pitch. I yeah. forgot he was there. It was that he was bad. Very, he was very poor. And there's times where it looks like he sort of worked out how to play as a striker. And there are other times where he just doesn't look like he knows what he's doing in that position. Can I say um, something I, controversial about that, Kino? I think that's against poor teams. He looks like a striker. Yeah, and then when he plays against defenders that are that are at least somewhat capable, I mean Carrick and Blind, that's you wouldn't assume well, to be like the most dynamic partnership. But then again, Carrick and Blind at centre back are arguably better than like a Burnley partnership that he's played against in the past. No disrespect to Burnley, but you see what I'm saying. There's a different that's colour of player. That's a monster. <laughs> yeah, you would say that. That's what is confusing about this game was that actually he was playing against a third, fourth fifth even combination of United centre-backs in Carrick and Blinn. Really, if any of their centre-halves had been available, he would have played in front of one of those two in that position. Um, and they're both not known for their pace. You'd have expected him to actually have a field day. And the fact that he didn't turn up is 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 worse. Um, and really, I think he should have been... He brought Shiro on maybe with about 70 minutes gone. Um, mm. And to me, he could have made that change at half-time and he probably should have done because... 
Um, while Sanchez didn't have his best game, I thought wingers for both teams had good games actually because Memphis probably had his best game in the Premier League for United this season, I would say, working extremely hard. Uh, yeah. And in the first played half, played well in midweek as well. Played well at Midland. Yeah, it, it seemed like he followed that form into this game. Definitely, and and, and I think he, he's it's it's always tough for a player that's young coming into a team like United in another country, um, and he's had his problems off the field as well this year. But he looks to sort of be getting into it a little bit more and it'll be interesting to see what he does next year um, so yeah. that was the that was Memphis for United Sanchez while he didn't have his best game um, in the first half in particular uh, him and Ozil um, and also Welbeck were delivering some quite good crosses into the box uh, and it looked to me that Giroud sh- it was crying out for a player like Giroud who can, who can occasionally attack the near post quite well uh, and for me I, I would have made that change at half time instead of 70 minutes gone mm. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, we mentioned Depay obviously playing well in midweek and then playing well in the game of the weekend. Marcus Rashford, who it was he? Football it was Marcus Rashford. Yeah, I was. He's actually well. He's like, I think he's championship he's been, player. He's been spoken about us a little while. He's been spoken about us a little while for being this sort of one of one of United's brighter sparks under twenty ones. Under twenty ones, the last few years have actually been pretty good. Um, oh yeah, and, and, and he's been a part of that. And I have a question. Is is uh, is Ra- obviously you two are football manager aficionados? <laughs> is yeah. is Rashford one of those players that you'd pick up? He, as he's an a bit FM like Kelechi Ihinacho. He's not a go-to player. But if he's available, you pick him up because he will do a job for a mid-end right. Premier League. So team. he's not he's not yeah. he's not a known wonder kid, is he? He's not I guess like the way to sum up, Kino. He's not your world class. Like like if you're a yeah, if no. if you're a top four team, he's probably like your third, fourth choice striker at the age of twenty six. He's that kind of right. player. He's not. He's not okay. like he's not a fully fledged starter, but he would be for. But like, so, so what we're basically he's saying is, like, in in in, <laughs> in in when he's when he's twenty five in uh in what seven years time, he will be up front for Europa League specialists Leicester City. That's that's what we're saying. That's what we'll be playing for. Okay. Um, around, around that area. It's it's an incredible rise, isn't it? Eighteen years of age, he comes in in the Europa League, and he's playing with in a similar way to Martial when he first came into the United setup. He's playing without fear. He's not overthinking things, and he's doing what a striker does, and he's doing it bl- bloody well so far. So uh, yeah, it's good to see. I think a lot of United fans are calling for him to just play instead of Rooney now. But even when Rooney were, comes back, forget it. I mean, there are there are a couple of things that caught my eye from that match. Um, he. He worked, as you'd probably expect, he put in the yards. Um, and although he got tired, he sort of looked like he was carrying cramp a bit towards the, the end of the game. Mm. He put in the yards and defended really well from the front. Um, he pressured the centre-halves very well of Arsenal. Tracked back. There was one There was one uh, moment I can remember in the first half when he came all the way back to the edge, um, tracking Ozil to the edge of his own box, put in a really good challenge. So he did that well. Um, mm. And one of the things that I did hear Van Hal had said to him was sort of play in the width of the six yard box when uh, United were on the attack and both his goals came from doing that uh, the first yeah. one was quite an opportunistic sort of poacher's goal the second I think should have been def- it shouldn't have got to him um, because while Koscielny went up the, the cross wasn't uh, a particularly good cross it was quite slow there wasn't much pace on it it was sort of looped in by um, Varela uh, while Koscielny went to the ball and missed it Gabriel sort of assumed he was going to get it and yeah. gave it Lashford about three or four yards in the area, which is quite a lot in, in that sh- small space. Gabriel uh, was pretty comical throughout the game. He yeah, played, uh, not, a, not his best game, I, no. I dare say. Um, and while it was a very good header from Rashford to um, angle it in past uh, an excellent keeper in check, while it was a, a little bit behind him, he shouldn't really have been presented with that chance, but to take it was impressive. Yeah, I actually thought first half the game, the game in itself, there wasn't, there wasn't, there was a goal in t- on twenty nine, and that livened things up a little bit. But it wasn't really until Arsenal scored the game really got into life. The first half an hour, you wouldn't have known it was United Arsenal. Old, Old no, Trafford was very quiet. Classic, Arsenal fans were were relatively quiet. United fans were relatively quiet. And every time Arsenal it's, scored, it's there was just a weird silence. Even though Arsenal, I do, Arsenal I do think scored, it's weird. It actually, this game, you always forget it's a third v fourth. It didn't have that feistiness about it. And I don't know if it's just because both teams are a little bit off, perhaps where their fans expect them to be. It didn't, didn't mm, have that yeah. feeling. I, th- I think it's that of a deciding game for me. I think that is the the thing. Uh, it seemed like a three two Man United Arsenal. You'd expect that to be a, you know a, a barnstormer of a game. Do you, do you know what it is? Say, 
can I just go into that? Is, yeah, I think yeah, it, I think it's a big thing about fan confidence because I think previously United fans go into any game against any team and think we can win this. And Arsenal have had a similar attitude throughout the years that they can go into it. But there's almost this expectation that if it goes wrong, they are ready to be angry. And it's not a reactive, oh my God, I can't, we've lost this game. It's there we go again. And I think that's how Arsenal fans feel. And I think if the result was different and Arsenal win 3 or 4 nil or something like that, United fans go, right, this Van Aal's got to go. And it's it's crazy, really, how that changes depending on one result and how the fans will react this week. And Arsenal fans are going into a game against Spurs next week and almost forgetting that midweek they play Swansea which is a risky little thing to do. Yeah. So Swansea weren't Swansea obviously collapsed a little bit against Spurs, but didn't play particularly badly. No. Swansea definitely. this week, a team that have been known in the past to uh, to disrupt Arsenal. Admittedly, it's at the Emirates, but even so, Swansea have performed there as well as at their ground. I think Arsenal are in danger of focusing far too much on this big game against Tottenham. Huge game. If Arsenal lose, they're out of the title race and Tottenham become almost favourites for the league, you'd say, based on their squad compared to Leicester's. They have to be very careful in this game against Swansea. And my tip of the week is that Swansea will get a draw in that game because because Arsenal's intentions and thoughts are elsewhere. Can we just touch Jack? upon two more things before we perhaps go on to the Swansea game that happened at the weekend? And the two things I want to talk about. The first yeah. thing, the Ramsey non-red card. That is the kind of decision I was actually very happy to see. I don't know if you guys saw it where he gave a bit of a push. That is a sensible it's not, yellow it's, card. It's not a red it's not, it's not a red. This idea that if you raise your hands, it's a red. It's not, it's I, not I a was rule. applauding that because there's too many games where that is a red. And I don't think it, it's not a red. It's I'm not, not violent. Not so much conduct. anymore, I don't Not so much anymore. I, I said, don't know. Yeah, there I don't was think, a few I think, was it in years gone by, year? it has been. Affleck this year. Yeah, that, was, that looked like a little flicky. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't a red either. But, but then yeah. the other yeah, thing I want to talk about is the Van Hal dive. <laughs> yes. How can we not talk about I had a great weekend on Twitter due to that happening. Uh, Kino, you've you've seen this, I assume. Brilliant moment. <laughs> yeah, it. that's the best. I, way, it's the best way to sum it up. I, I it was a brilliant. Did you hear moment. him in the press conference afterwards? Where he's just a bit like, yeah, I got a bit carried away. Really, I was a bit stressed. It was a stressful game. It's just like it's it's the picture. I don't know if you saw the picture I posted with the with the tagline, the look you get when you're playing dead and your friends just aren't having any of it. But it, it was that look in particular where I thought Van Hal. I think Van Hal went down. He had a moment where he thought, I'm on the floor here, and I think everyone's seen it, and I'm I'm, I'm going to have to get back up again now. And it was hilarious. Like, it, was, it was brilliant. I love I loved the fact he's a character within the league. And I, think I really sometimes want a geeky kind of to lift him up stupid, and just plonk but... him in a wheelchair and wheel him away. No, what I'd have liked is if Giggs and the other assistant had just done the same thing. <laughs> they were just all on the floor, three of them, just, uh, just laid out. I'd have liked that. That would have been fun. Uh, there we have it, folks. Ben, on... Ben Stream to have Ryan Giggs and Van Hal laid out. Like some of the like some of the uh, some of the pictures of Van Hal laid in different positions are fantastic. <laughs> Even the one them. where he's like one, tripping up Gerard is slipped onto like, my it's timeline. Sad, which but... I wasn't a fan of. Yeah, yeah. The one where he's just sort of in a in a strip club, just laid on a bed. <laughs> it's just it's good. I'm not I'm seeing like that it. one. I'm going like to Google that now. Van Hal a... strip club. Oh yes, he, he is the word strip club. He's on it. Um, I, I just you just know in the next few weeks that's going to pop up somewhere in a very funny funny uh, situation shall we talk about your team then Kino uh, Tottenham got a win against Swansea and, and your boys are looking title contenders to, to the top degree right now I, at the end of the game Alan Curtis described Spurs um, as relentless and I think that is it's probably the best way to characterise them because if there's one hallmark that uh, you could really point at as that Pochettino is left on this team in his two and a half years in charge it would be the the levels of fitness and the intensity with which they play for the whole 90 minutes um, it's almost sort of Borussia Dortmund 2012-13 levels of, of energy yeah. it, um, it makes you like Tottenham, it makes you like them absolutely like, you've had it all year and to me, to me it's a bit awkward because Tottenham fans can be a little bit mouthy on Twitter much like every fan base I should, I should clarify but it's nice to see such a young team, second youngest team in the Premier League, and they. I, I almost want I know, the story of Leicester's great, but to see a team sort of develop so quickly, and and it is a, it's been a developmental process under Pochettino. You you want them to win it, don't you, Kino? Let's face it, you want them to win it. I I, I think the the Leicester story is two it was two worthy fantastic winners of the Premier League. Whatever happens. Um, yeah. Hopefully, one of those two it's going to be disappointed. It's, it's going to be disappointed yeah. with City with it, isn't it? It's going to be yeah. really sad when that um, happens. But the Leicester story is a, a sort of a more crazy sort of 
unlikely fairy tale whereas the Tottenham one is a testament to the the quality of the man in charge and a testament mm. to sort of the belief that he has in his young players um, it's sort of a more of a I don't want to say more deserving or more of a sort of a meritocracy but mm. I feel like Tottenham do have the better team than Leicester and while they've been on this sort of crazy run and it's been incredible to watch Leicester sort of roller coaster their way through the season at the top of the league I feel Spurs would almost be kind of a more consistent um, deserving winner in, in, in footballing terms um, I mentioned about the fitness and, and it just allows them to, to wear teams down over the whole 90 minutes obviously Swansea went ahead um, and I did think at that when I saw the goal went in. I was watching the um, the Arsenal game. I did think when that Swansea goal went in, oh maybe they're maybe they're spursing it up again as they tend to do. Um, yeah. But but the intensity with which they play, like I say, for the whole game, just it makes them dangerous for the whole game. It, it means that you can never you can never switch off against them, particularly away from home, uh, and and they can turn games around just like they did. If the there's weekend. a if there's a week they're going to spurs it up a little bit, they're away at West Ham, which is a tricky difficult. game West very West difficult West playing very well and um, then they play obviously uh, they've got a home game against Arsenal and it's a huge week for Tottenham it's a massive week for Tottenham People, uh, we talk about Arsenal it's just as difficult they're both going to go into that game It'd be, uh, like the midweek fixtures I know that you might be listening to this after they've been played the, mid- the midweek fixtures decide a lot about the mentality of these teams going into the game against each other uh, it's going to be fascinating to see Arsenal Tottenham uh, combine on the other side of it Leicester still top of the league uh, an 88th minute a Joa goal scraped through against Norwich who, who, Norwich played well by all accounts but Leicester have got that that league title feeling haven't they it was one of those really that they it's grabbed a goal later it's chapter isn't it for that film they're making off they do a book on it then I actually yeah. said going into this game this was a game where I felt like Leicester could easily lose this like 1-0 I thought they'd actually either thrash I Norwich that, or lose yeah. narrowly I tweeted it out. I thought I thought Norwich might just nick it off them, but Leicester, Leicester do what Leicester seem to be again. Leicester proved me wrong. Uh, getting sick of it. Only four shots on target in the game. Leicester had three. Yeah, had one. that's unusual for Leicester. Quite, like, quite we sticky. Talk, we made a lot about the fact that Leicester, you know, they hit the bigger teams on the break well, but they have the capabilities to break down the weaker teams. I do feel like this is perhaps the first time where I've seen them look a little bit out of ideas at times. Yeah, I'd agree. With, I watched the game. I agree with that. Actually, I thought there were times where Mares didn't have anywhere near as the impact. Vardy looked a little bit stifled. Norwich played a five, like a, like a three in midfield and two wing backs. So that will happen. Um, that's interesting. Actually, we, we were talking. I was. I say I was talking to. I was watching. Uh, it was. It was two strikers. It was football focus. It was Chris Sutton, and it was another striker. What you were on name, football name focus. Of, no, I wasn't on. Oh, okay. It was Dan Walker doing it. I didn't get the gig. Um, Outrageous! It was Chris Sutton and, and another forward. I forget who the forward was. And essentially, Jason they were Roberts, saying that it's much. Footballers who occasionally it wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't Jason Roberts. But he was saying that it was. It's very difficult. It's much more difficult, in fact. That was deal on Dublin um, to play against a three comparatively to a two, and that sounds obvious. But it's about the space that that's not left. And he, they they yeah. talking about Sunderland doing actually, and Sunderland make it difficult. And, it, and Norwich had the same effect. I sort of listened to what they said there. Although Chris Sutton is a very irritating man, very smug individual. Um, and, and Norwich did that against Leicester and, and Vardy was struggling it'll be interesting to see there is, this is going somewhere boys um, if teams do that against Leicester now um, Leicester have got West Brom coming up another team that are renowned for if they want to part the boss a little bit then they, they bloody they will do they can do that they and can it'll play be inter- the three and it'll be interesting to see if Leicester can break it down um, I thought what was what was most impressive about um, Leicester this game was uh, in a similar way to Spurs, actually, they're all very fit. A very high energy game that they play for the, for for the whole ninety minutes, um, and they the the goal that they scored, a Joa's goal in the 89th minute, was not a goal that you expect to see when a team is nil nil and hopefully trying to, to 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 sort of just scrape a ball over the line to win one nil. It was it was a pretty actually it was a very well worked goal. Uh, and and that is testament to the to the level of their fitness and the fact that they could combine in that way. Um, where Drinkwater played a really nice ball into Mares, who swivelled and slid the ball down the line to Albrighton, who then whipped a brilliant cross um, onto uh, through to Ajoa, uh, and, and who finished well. Uh, and it was quite a very complete team goal, something that you wouldn't expect for a team that's just trying to nick a goal in the final few minutes. So mm. while I, I, I agree they they had difficulties 
throughout the game breaking Norwich down it was impressive to see that the chances the chance that they did have when the pressure was must have been piling on those players right yeah. at the very end of that game in front of their expectant home fans who are now believing the narrative of them winning the league they are they do believe uh, the pressure that they must have had in that moment to keep their heads and, and to 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 sort of construct a goal like that through that move was was really impressive and I hope they yeah. continue to do that I hope the Leicester fans are believing I, I'd hate to think that they're ex- they're expecting I really hope I don't know particularly I don't talk to that many Leicester fans but I hope they don't also think a little bit like the media do a little bit like you sort of your everyday, the everyday fan does that they're going to drop off I hope they think they're going to win it because whether they win it or not you know I, what I, that feels like don't you Ben yeah I do <laughs> but no but but the thing is but the thing is right I think, but <laughs> hi Jack welcome Sorry, back um even if you if you check my tweets, Kino, you know, the day Liverpool didn't win the league and City won it on the final day, um, I did sort of reflect and think to myself, do you know what? This was a this was the best season I've enjoyed watching Liverpool play. And Leicester and Tottenham fans, whether you win the game or not, whether you win the league or not, it will be a very memorable season. And you should remember, like we're twenty seven games in right now, and you're you're the top two. And no matter what happens, you should in, you should always remember how much you've enjoyed this season, and not worry too much about the end result. Of course, if you win it, it will be the greatest moment in both of your clubs' history to to beat the powerhouse, which is the Premier League, to beat Arsenal, City, United, Chelsea, Liverpool, etc., who have got millions to spend. I, I hope Leicester fans, no matter where they finish, enjoy it. So, yeah. I don't know why I've gone on a sort of passionate plea about Leicester fans, but I do. Go I do have, they, have that, that opinion. They, no, they should enjoy it though. I know, I'm not trying to patronise. I'm just saying it would be awful if by the end of the season, say they lose the last four games, right, and they blow the league, and there's this idea of, well, like, if Ranieri can't get them to win it, we should we should maybe move him on. The team have proved they're capable. I would hate to think that would become the reality of Leicester oh, if that yeah. if that no, happens. I agree. I totally so, and, agree. and that wouldn't be it wouldn't be pleasurable to see because they've had a they've had a great season. They're going to finish top four. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick can't my see neck Leicester out on the, the line as well now. and say I don't think Leicester will have a season like this again for the next five years. Well, that's that's what I mean. As a Liverpool fan, Jack, we know a one-off season's fantastic. <laughs> Finishing it's that feeling of waking highlight. up like for the, every game and like just getting it on early and watching literally every match. Yeah, I'd, I'd, love, like I'd, love a, I'd love a one-off season in the top half. The well, top you will have next season. There'll be, be the championship in the championship. A one-off season for the title. So, yeah. Can I just say we've talked a lot about the teams at the top. We talked about Leicester. We talked about Tottenham. We talked about Arsenal. There were a few draws in here, like Bournemouth drawing with Watford nil-nil. There is one game though in the lower half that I do think is worth talking about. And that is West Brom Palace. Yeah. Well, West Brom have scored three goals in a game. They scored so... three goals in thirty-one minutes. Incredible. Incredible. I've got, I've got nothing to say. Is that more than they scored that. this that's season? A, that's the. <laughs> That's the standard West Brom have set that they've scored three goals in a game. And Kino's not saying anything other than incredible, incredible. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the only time they've done it this season. Uh, I, it's the, yeah, they've not scored three. The last time they was, scored three was a three 0 win against Chelsea, uh, as, which was the second from last game last season. As so a, as a fan of, I know I know this sounds quite silly, but in, as a fan incredible. of incredible, <laughs> as a Villa fan, um, obviously many of the teams around us geographically uh, their supporters have a, do have a slight inferiority complex it was it was nice of me to watch West Brom in the last sort of half an hour of this game and their fans absolutely bricking it because they very nearly screwed it up um, Connor Wickham I think uh, slightly overrated maybe overhyped in the way that he plays I, I, I don't legend. think he quite has the yeah I, for, for the price tags that he's moved for in his career I don't think he, he the the goals he scores justifies that but he scored two very well the one goal was absolutely fantastic the technique on his second volley was superb uh, and, and and when he scored that second goal you could see the Albion fans and players um, just trembling and, and really um, I know Palace are out of form in the league they won in the cup um, You, they should really have pushed on because the, the point was there for them to take because they were after um after Wickham scored his second goal, they were making so many nervous errors, and and, and yeah, uh, it was it was a very interesting game actually to watch. Um, How old do you think Conor Wickham is? Just uh, you might you might twenty four, twenty three, a little bit younger. Yeah, twenty three too. Yeah, twenty two. Yeah. Uh, my favorite fact about Conor Wickham is that he's got one of his middle names is Ralph. Like so it. I can enjoy that. Can we discuss that? Nice so we mentioned Wickham. the goals. It's worth knowing West Brom previous five Premier League games had scored two goals. Are we worried for Palace? 
I know that's a mad thing to say, well, but, I, but they are they're slowly it's... slipping down the league. They've well, only got thirty two points. I mean, like, it's Callum. I hate. I'm sorry to do this. Go for it. I, uh, I've got a lot of things wrong this season in terms of predictions. Leicester, Chelsea, most things, in fact. And uh, one thing I did say, gentlemen, was that I thought Palace would have a very underwhelming season and finish comfortably in the bottom half. Continue, Callum. They are eight points from the drop zone. Now we talked about how perception and how one result sort of shifts the perception of, of fans and the media. Now earlier on they did lose to us 1-0 and they've and they've not been good really uh, I think they've got one point all year so they're not in good form West Brom are only three points above them but the general consensus now after that win is that West Brom appear to sort of be uh, safe-ish and, and they should be fine whatever happens now this season and Palace are only three points behind West Brom um, so they pick up one win and maybe, maybe a second um, if they can string a couple of wins together and I think they'll be fine but it their form in the last few months points to a sort of a broader point about Alan Pardew and that when his teams are not performing well, uh, when there's obvious flaws, I, I know they've had injuries but they've not had that many missing obviously Balassi's a big player for them but they've had players available uh, and Kabai's not been out for a, a period of time so that they have had a lot of their first 11 there. When things go wrong for Pardew, he, and, and he showed this at Newcastle it's, he, he finds it hard to change and to sort of lift his team out of the rut now they may have to sort of continue with this bad form till the end of the year because he might need a summer to fix it but I think it is a flaw in Pardew as a manager that when his teams aren't playing well he finds it very very hard uh, to, to sort of to, to bring them out of that form and make the changes necessary they are still in the mm-hmm. FA I, I agree they, they've missed I know Wickham's got a couple right but they've missed a, they've missed a first choice striker this is simple they're Bamford he's gone to Norwich they've now they, they've, they're deciding they're deciding not to. Uh, the guy to play over. Yeah, but they, they they didn't invest in the summer when they arguably that was the time they needed to. And then, yeah. and at this point, like it's hard to bring in a player like Adaboyo and expect him to play well. Adaboyo may play well for ten games. He might not. So it's it's something Palace maybe should have addressed earlier. Um, I don't know if you just saw I linked the league table that I predicted. Okay. I forgot completely. I had Villa in eighth. I mean, <sighs> you got my league table there. I haven't got it to hand, no. But Villa, Villa at eighth. I had West Brom bottom, Leicester nineteenth. Sunderland, Norwich, Watford. I mean, I've given West Ham a tough time there in fifteenth, and I, uh, Chelsea have Chelsea screwed it up. No, but in by fifth, you were dreaming. Not finished. I was. Yeah, I was dreaming. Yeah. So I'm looking the, at this now. I'm realizing that we should, should be doing a football podcast, should we? Yeah. So there yeah. were a few other games. Yeah. I don't think they need to be talked about too much. West Ham beat Sunderland fairly standard at home. I think that. Southampton lost to Chelsea. Chelsea coming into form again. Southampton, you know, they're they're in seventh, perhaps expected to win. Chelsea this, have been in form. Chelsea Ooh. are on a bit of a resurgence, I think, at the moment. I think they're unbeaten in their last eight or nine or something. Um, unbeaten under hitting. So they're they're going fairly strong. Um, we already talked a little bit about it, but there was. As I get the, do you feel like Jack's trying to move us on? I want to just get to the features, uh, boys. I if I'm know. honest, I feel like we we've talked about. I don't want to say the meaningful games, the games that have real talking points. I feel like it, Jack's had a lovely run run down of like every fixture. There. Are we done, Jack? Are we done, done with the I Premier mean, League? Do you want to get to questions? Are you going to questions? That's, that's not news. Are we going to the questions, Let's do it. Jack? Let's get, we get to them. Sorry, I'm, I want. All I right. feel like we've talked a lot about the interesting stuff, and I don't want us to get bogged down. All right, here Jack. All about. right. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cuddle him. Someone cuddle him. God damn it. Cuddle him. Uh, Kino. Questions of the week. Uh, right. Shall we leave the FIFA one till last? Yeah, go on then. We'll leave that till the end. Um, Desi Nev's back again. After yes. the fan show. Do I think officially think... friend of the show now, by the way. Don't you? Friend Desi of the show. show. Yeah, for sure. Bezzy? Bezzy Nev? Bezzy, Bezzy, Bezzy Nev. Nev. Like him. Uh, Bezzy Nev. At For The Fan Show, do you think teams overachieving this year, such as Spurs and Leicester, will be able to strengthen in the summer, or will they lose out on the best players in their squads? Now, Should we should we do this sort of analytically, in a way of, do we think I Vardy think, will leave Leicester, despite signing a new contract? Or, or Mar- I think Mars is the more likely to be picked up. Uh, okay, Jack, do you Vardy think club. Vardy will leave? <sighs> Okay, so he's signed a new contract, but then the, oh, I, sit, wanted, here, wanted yes I no. sit here and I just think who is going to want to sign him? And I know that sounds like a bizarre thing, but what I mean is, who? what other Champions League team is going to want to sign him? 
and I just I maybe maybe Tottenham, but if Leicester in the league, then why is he going to want to leave them? So no, I think he's staying. Okay, but Mares, no matter what happens with Leicester, I think I will. I certainly think he will leave. He seems to the kind of guy that is trying to be one of the best players in the world, despite the fact yeah. he's currently at Leicester. Um, yeah, and I, I think I think he'll leave. I don't know what the Payet, figure will be. Neymar, I, Suarez, Messi. Well, Mahrez. I don't. Coutinho. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, don't I don't know. I don't know what he'll do. But I think I think he's the kind of guy that uh, that will want to leave. Kino, do you think Vardy will go? I, I agree about Mares. I don't think Vardy will leave, no. Um, no, I, I think, I'd agree with Jack's reasoning. I think Jack's reasoning's pretty good, actually. I Can't think, I think Mares that. seems like the kind of guy... Mares <laughs> seems like the kind of guy who would back himself uh, in any, almost any sort of comparison. Uh, I bet he wouldn't in a fight with Jamie Vardy. No, I, I, no. I bet, bet Jay Vards every day. Every I think he'd... he'd Mares would recruit Vards. Robert Huth... Do you know what would not surprise me, right? If in like five or six years' time, maybe maybe in like three years' time, Jamie Vardy will be bored of football and it'll just be, it'll just be a UFC fighter. I can see it. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe. He he will be the man to take down I Conor think McGregor. He'll become a pro wrestler, like, you know, like a, a WWE. Like, he's, he's got a bit of the he's not, he's not, about him, I feel. No, nah, R- Robert needs to Robert make Huth. some serious gains, though, doesn't he, really? <laughs> Robert think, Huth could oh, yeah, do I that think, joke. Can you imagine Robert I Huth with Huth... masks? So, yeah, maybe. Who would blimey? That's gone. <laughs> Where's that come from? Uh, I was Jack's reading had a bad day. Comments earlier, so. Oh dearie me. Um, the we should, um, about those the we better. Should, we should say. Uh, so I, th- I think Leicester are the more likely of those two to have their players cherry picked, um, purely because they are are, but, are a smaller Callum, team. Let me paint a picture. Leicester win the league. Arsenal beat Tottenham this weekend and go above them after both had indifferent results midweek. Harry Kane has finished third. He starts for England at the Euros. Manchester United put in a thirty-five, forty million pound bid. Does Harry Kane leave? Yeah, I think he does. So, do but we think Kane will leave if, if Tottenham? So, are we legitimately saying now that if Tottenham don't win the league, that Harry Kane will be looking mm, for a move? I, think I hope it, not. I bloody hope not. I, I agree with say. you, and I hope this team will stay together. And I think they've got a good chance think, of keeping I think what it together. Just Spurs have actually, unlike Leicester, is there hasn't really been a magnifying glass thrown on a you know like two or one or two like Spurs players has been the defining factors behind their season. And whilst it's yeah. it's yeah. impossible to argue like that, Ericsson and Kane haven't been key to them. It's like they've got a good supporting cast Ali. around them. And so actually, I think it, it's difficult to say who the star is, isn't it? That, that's is that what, what I mean. At? And so I but, think it's a little. I feel like when you look at their team, is there a player who is going to move to like you know a Barcelona or a Real Madrid right now? Probably not. If I'm honest, I think Ericsson and Lamela might be the the two who you'd say. I think Kane is a bit too traditional to go to a massive massive club. And I, I mean, you mm. mentioned United. I, I guess if, if I just I don't get why if Rashford, to go if to Rashford emerges, that won't happen. Rashford emerges. Well, I, I guess to answer to answer your to your question, I don't know where to go to United, and it pains me to say because they're Manchester United. Is is the I just, sort I just of think the base ground? Answer. You finish top two with a team that you've been with since like your junior career. Really, you've worked them up. You've scored you know record league goals for them. You go into the Euros having played for them like. You've already proved there that you don't need to go to a Manchester United who are a I step would, backwards. I would hope that's true. I, I would hope that's true, but I think for for a lot of footballers, they look at they look at the long term. And well, short short term, this is great for Kane, and I, I think he's having a great season. He's proven a lot again. He's another player that's proven a lot of people wrong. But the temptation of getting a move to Manchester United it doesn't really. I, I mean, he's I mean, got to look at it from a footballing perspective it doesn't really like matter look at, I, I hope he doesn't though if I'm just, in that dressing room though I look on? around that team and it's a very young team as you've already mentioned like I just don't yeah. I'm, playing, I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit let's, let's not get bobbed down on it it's a good um, question good question it's a good it question is, as as we've come to expect from Mr Nev uh, yeah Bezzy. from Bezzy Nev from from uh, Mr Smith James can I just I, say uh, James James don't change your name to Bezzy Nev like not no, not on our behalf I mean if you do we'll read every question every week but you know don't don't force yourself yeah. to um, uh, SWBF no boy uh, asks do you think and this uh, uh, we could have mentioned this during the, the the main body of the show but I thought I'd leave it do you think the next United manager presuming that Van Gaal will leave if not this season, but the mm. next summer. Do you think the next United manager will give the youth as much as a chance as Louis van Gaal has done? Now, um, should premise this by saying that he has brought through nine, given nine uh, youth team players their debut. 
I'm not sure if it's this season. It could be it's including it's last season as well. Can I just... I want to yeah. slam down stuff on my desk and get annoyed about this, like... I, I'm not saying that Van Hal hasn't developed players and given players a chance, because he has, but it isn't out of choice. It's because he has to, because he right. hasn't got a big squad. And I know... I think this weekend he's played off as going, mm. oh, yes, I, I chose not to have a big squad because we have these young players and we'll give them a chance. Bullshit. Sorry. Well, I think the, I think you've got a point there. I, I think you have a point because... He's not chosen to play uh, these young players. He's been forced to play them. Well, I would say... I, I think it's um, probably 60% that, 40% the other way because Van Gaal does have a track record of bringing through young players at almost every club he's been through. Famously, he um, gave Thomas Muller at Bayern his first season pretty much in the starting 11. His famous quote where he goes, Muller always plays... Um, whatever happens and, he, uh, and also going further back um, brought through uh, although he, he didn't really get on with him brought through Xavi at Barcelona um, and, and sort of brought him into the team alongside Guardiola he does promote the youth I think that is a kind of almost like an, in, an inherited Ajax thing but I think in 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 your um, defence he has had no choice but to bring through some of these players uh, probably earlier than he would have liked to because of the injuries and because of the fact that They've messed the squad around quite a lot this last two mm. years, so I think it's no, a combination I, of both things. I I would agree. I, I think it. I could answer the question sort of quite obviously. I think it depends who comes into United. I, I don't. I don't, I don't think know. Mourinho would. Uh, well, would that's that's the thing, isn't it? That. Mourinho's the big talk. Do, you, do we really I, think, I think that Mourinho's is going to start promoting? I think part of it is who comes in as manager. I think the other part of it is who gets signed. Well, actually, we say it depends who comes in as manager. I actually don't think it matters because let's okay. We're, I think we're all kind of making the assumption that Louis Van Gaal will leave and somebody else will come in. You're so, who on earth is going to go into a job at United, especially Mourinho, but but anyone really, and say right? I know I know they've, we've got 150 million there to spend, and thanks for that. But let's promote the youth. Who's going to risk their their star at Manchester United on the youth players? I think at it, would o- it, it would only be. Um if obviously this hadn't been announced I would have said someone like Guardiola but but even someone, then is, someone, is Guardiola going to risk that I don't, I I don't think, think there's many I, managers I that would think risk he's it. so uh, yeah not many but like maybe a handful uh, I could maybe think of players maybe someone like Simeone some, a manager that is so confident in their abilities and their status that they could go to United and say I'm going to do it I'm going to do it this way <laughs> dear Brendan yeah possibly <laughs> it's time uh, should we move on final question um, uh, let, let's uh, let's put one more sort of fun one in there before we get on to fun because, one. because that's not <laughs> fun. Um, Yam, Yam Yam FM slash Matt says, um, and you'll have to think about this a little bit. What what do you think uh, this year has been the craziest result uh, in your opinion? So you know what's what's been the most sort of mental game or what's surprised and you? The Charlie most? Austin Ooh. scored at Old Trafford. That's oh, that's yeah. j- <laughs> although uh, that's not a terrible yeah, one. Sorry, I just wanted to get oh, Charlie Austin like, in. It's got an hour. I mean, in. make it make it explicit. It's not it's not it's not like it's not a terrible one, but it's not fucking surprising, is it, Callum? Like, I, you know, as a Villa fan, I would have said uh, six nil. Yeah, I was surprised it wasn't. <laughs> <that long. laughs> Let's have a moment of silence. I that. think Liverpool Liverpool beating City as they did was a yeah. was a bit of a shock. Uh, Bournemouth beat Chelsea. That was a big one. That was, I think the I way think the way the, the way that Leicester went to Man City a few weeks ago was was just quite audacious. I think the five four you know five four is my winner. favorite game this year. Liverpool Norwich. Oh yeah, I think I, I would say if I, if we had to pick a winner, some good candidates there. Um, but sadly, Jack Leonardo will not be winning the Oscar this year. Uh, with oh, your okay. five four, I think when Leicester, when Leicester beat United five three early in the year, was it this year? I think that was last year, mate. Look, it was a great game. I think, g- I think we and let's remember year. it. That let's remember was last it. Year. <laughs> right, hang on then. Let me get a second. Up. All right. Well, you know what? So, yeah, let me do it. Let, this is. I'm going to do a keynote impression. Can we? Uh, can we cut that? No, out? no, we're not please, cutting please, that. Please, can we? Can that? Oh, fa- thanks, I was. I would maybe say the Liverpool Norwich five four because there's only been three yeah, of those no, in I'd, Premier League. That was the best game. Considering enjoyable. I made, <laughs> considering that's the game from last season, <laughs> let's uh, let's go with that. I'm desperately looking for another one now. So if we just is that the one that made you realise uh, Liverpool uh, Leicester could win the league? Is it that five that's, three. Look, let me let's do the real quiz. Um, I think ooh, some great candidate options here. Right, should we go uh, on to the last question? When when, New, when Newcastle beat Norwich six two, 
Who saw that coming? Yeah, that is that is a weird one. Six shots. Oh, let's move on. Let's, let's Joe see. Moon. Joe <laughs> Moon at yeah. Mooney 3D asks for the fan show. What are your opinions on the recent FIFA elections? Obviously, on Friday, Gianni Infantino was sworn in as the FIFA president like for it. God knows how long. No fixed terms. It could do it till he dies. Uh, My favourite thing about this is yeah. it's taught me. You know, I've learned a lot of things in life, but this has taught me if you're good at handling balls. You're going to get far in oh, life. God. I've watched that man do the Champions <laughs> you know League me? draw you for a number of years. Look at him now. What will happen? Do you think he'll continue to do it? Do you think he'll get the someone thing else is, in? Like, oh, I would, in like, doing the draw, I would like that, but no, he won't do it. In doing the draws, it kind of makes him seem like he's not very important. It's a bit like being like you know the runner at a film studio to becoming the director overnight. He is... It, it's but a bit like the Everton manager becoming the Manchester United manager. Gianni, Inf- like yeah. Gianni Fantino has been like the MC or the hype man of the um, of the UEFA draws. He's been the one sort of running around the stage, like leaning down into the crowd, sort of shouting. And I'm not sure they'll have the same hype without him. I don't think anyone can replicate we'll, it. Uh, we'll post this on Twitter later. This picture sums up. Uh, is it how, how do you say his, his first name? Gianni. Gianni. Gianni Infantino. That, that's, that's Gianni. Gianni. Any problems? What problems? He's got that sort of look about him. He well, looks like it, a younger it, Seth like Blatter. It. He looks like Blatter before well, the. Don't say funny. that. Don't Fra- bloody say that. It's funny that. you should say that because he's actually from the same village oh, as Seth history Blatter repeating in itself. Well, you watch. Mm. I don't want to say it. But it could be. I mean, if you look at um, to to maybe put a slightly serious uh, spin on this, um, there it, there was Sheikh Salman. Can we Prince discuss Ali, Salman? Because um, he had the support of all the African nations. Well, that guy has a very shady record, and he almost exactly. Got so I think. So I think in terms of answering the question, you know, to to summarise, the fact that Infantino got elected is still bad because he's still one of the boys. Uh, one of the um, FIFA, I think he's the lesser um, of a UA few evils. cronies. Well, he, yes, he he famously. I, I don't know if this is sort of. I don't know if this is a myth. This is true, true, but we're going to say it as fact. He wasn't alleged. Allegedly, he wasn't the biggest fan of Platini, and despite the fact they worked for the same organization, he and Platini weren't weren't great mates. And it seems to me like Blatter and uh, Platini, despite their sort of vocal outbursts at each other every now and then in, when FIFA and UEFA clashed they got on alright so I think in that respect I think he will be I think he's good for the fact that he doesn't immediately seem like a bad choice I th- but with FIFA as it so often is the case it's gonna we're, we'll see where we are in five years essentially we'll see if if FIFA continue with corruption claims continue with problems or if in five years FIFA is something that football can be proud of because it certainly isn't right now it is it's I well do and truly know, I, I appreciate that FIFA to needs around. like you know a head I do wonder if this has come a little bit premature in light of everything that's going on behind the scenes at the moment I feel like there's still more I to just, come I out just, from it all I just true. read something here that apparently him and Platini are close but I, there's there's murmurs. There's been a lot of scrutiny on said relationship. Uh, Infantino, of course, was extremely critical of the current um, criminal uh, procedures that the FBI, I presume, fair. FIFA, and the and the Swiss authorities. Um, he sort of has been quoted as saying that he doesn't know why they're continuing now. Blatter's gone and things like that, and that their bans are um, sort of the right uh, sort of punishment. Um, and so the attitude towards that is worrying. I agree on the fact that Sheikh Salman, who has a, at best questionable record for what he did in Bahrain in 2011 with regards to the, the sportsmen and women and um, people involved in the game that were um, involved in the protests in the Arab Spring, uh, he has a very, very questionable record with that. Um, so I think to that extent, it was a good job he didn't get it, although he was um, backed by many federations. Uh, I think, I for, think... Gian- for Gianni, though, he has to say those sort of things yeah. in regards to what you've mentioned there, because for him, he probably wants it. Comp- he doesn't want it mentioned again, and so his attitude of "Can the FBI just drop it, please?" It must be a little bit of a well. Look, I'm here now. Everyone relax. Party time. Don't like worry that, about it. Like that picture. He's- He's al- well. He's already had a, a, a game at FIFA. Hasn't he? He's already had. Like, when I say a game at FIFA, he hasn't picked up the controller. I mean they've had a game at FIFA. Like at the place, FIFA. What do you mean? They've played you football. Know, yes, yes, yes. He he played in the game. He, he invited ex players and media and all sorts of people to play a game on the on the pitches of FIFA. 
Doesn't that sound good? I wonder what those pitches are like. Uh, AstroTurfed, I think. Money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just shredded up money, <laughs> like aesthetic pitch. No, I can't. Do you know? I I now cannot find it. It was it was big talk today. I can't believe you two um, didn't know about this. Well, at least he's able to play the game. I feel like which is, we've uh, hit that point in the show where we do need to wrap up. We're talking. I don't know what. We're no, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Mark Bond. Um, oh, he, ah, he's right back. now. Before, yeah, before we, uh, before we do wrap up, I think you're right, Jack. But before we do, um, me and Ben were discussing the other day the possibility of adding a a Mark Bun inspired feature into for the fans. It could come after the credits. Ben, I wasn't I don't know involved in these discussions, viewers. Uh, yeah, do you know what we'll do? If you want to hear our story about Mark Bunn, stay tuned after the jingle. Uh, we'll, we'll end the main show here. It's only five minutes, Jack. Don't worry. You, don't have to, you can stay for a little bit longer. You can go um, if you want, Jack. You don't need yeah. to be <laughs> Thank you for your... Uh, thank you. You do that if you like. Uh, thank you for no, your questions. Right, we appreciate it. At, at For The Fun Show on Twitter. Jack's Jack's gone. I'm sure we'll do another goodbye in a moment, though. Uh, Kino, thanks for joining us this week. It's been a pleasure having, you, having your opinions. No problem, guys. Make sure you go and subscribe on iTunes. If you haven't, go and rate and because we, we do have a lot of ratings actually and that's really helpful I've on not the, got any milk. the search features yeah you're not hi Jack you're now fully fledged part of for the fans Kino you've added it to the, we've added it to the bio on on iTunes no no I mean on the Twitter oh it's it, we're 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 social media official now yeah I feel like you're taking over the don't, social don't media don't go on fullofans.com and see the world cup mention about the podcast yeah I, you should probably <laughs> sort that out old. <laughs> social media as official. we say if you ever enjoy that We'd, oh, me and Jack nearly got offered the chance to be on Five Live this week, you know? Yeah, you weren't invited. No, yeah, no, you weren't invited. But we were nearly offered the chance, but we neither of us replied in time. What would you say without my... It was about the FIFA fans. thing, actually. It was about the FIFA thing. I was going to talk about um, the money's made that brings pitch. us, <laughs> pitch is made of money. That brings us... To, that brings us to the end then if you've enjoyed this week's show as I say watch it on YouTube listen to it on YouTube uh, do leave a like if you want to see more of it subscribe on the YouTube for the fan show.com ignore what's written on it but please click the links if you're there if you, if you deem them helpful I guess is where we're going with this uh, Jack say goodbye goodbye Kino say goodbye good evening and we'll see you probably later in the week but yeah we'll, we'll see you straight after this outro jingle oh it's a yeah, all right, sculpture there. of a goal Benji okay, right it's we, perfection, Kino. Let's stop the recording on that. No, no, don't, don't, here, stop, don't stop. Don't stop the. Don't stop the. Don't stop the recording. Just keep it in. Just keep this bit in. Okay, right. How don't are we going to do this? Are we going to? What is the feature? I think. <sighs> I think it should be a Mark Burn role play going home to his wife. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I, I don't want to be well, a little bit. But the recording. I don't want to be part basically, of this. Jack. Basically, Jack. Each week. Each week, Jack. What do you mean? You stop your recording. I don't want to be part of this. All right, fine. Put this bit at the end. Fine. Okay. Um, Basically, Mark Bunn is known for having a career out of, well, essentially nothing in the last however long. He's got long. a great career. And, he's and got, he's Mark Bunn's com- got the life, Jack. He's got the life made for him. Um, a comedy figure towards me and Ben for, for, for a good few months now. Yeah, he's, like to the point where Mark Bunn's been in Villa for a little while, hasn't had his Wikipedia updated since the 2014 season. That's how irrelevant Mark Bunn is in the world of football. But he mm. has a great life, and that is the main thing. Because we... In terms of substitute goalkeepers, I think Mark Bunn has it made because, yeah. as we said, he he just turns up to a to a beautiful training ground every day. Uh, does a does a bit of training, does a plays a little bit of football, has a little bit of bants with the lads, and maybe gets a crossbar a challenge that sort of thing. Loves it. Yeah, kick, he, he's the one. He's the one kicking the balls at Brad Guzan for the saves. And Are we? Stuff. Is this bit going in? The, is this bit going in the? I podcast? was wondering that. Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I know how to save this. Uh, sorry, sorry, listeners, you've been conned. For the Mark Bond feature, tune in next week when me and Kino will have decided what it's actually about. Uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy your week. Bye. Oh, also, uh, we may well be doing a live show this Thursday, so stay tuned for that. If we love with care, from me, Dr. Benji and Kino and Jack, we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>